Hey guys, it's Melissa Catherine and welcome to this week's Done With Dieting Live. I am so happy to be here with you. Um, okay, we are going into, you guys know that I am heavy with mindset. I'm going to get cozy. Um, first off, I just got my hair cut. What do we think? Um, you're probably like, did you cut anything off? And I did. I actually did. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, all right. Um, I'm really excited to be with you. This week we're talking about how to retrain your mind to release the weight. How to retrain your mind to release the weight with ease. There's this three-step process that I'm going to take you through. So as you get, come on tonight's, or today's, Done With Dieting Live, um, please announce who you are and I would love to know where you're from and what really brought you here. So I'm Melissa Catherine. I am the founder and creator of Done With Dieting um, and Weight Loss for Life. And I have a few other programs in there as well. Uh, those are the two that I'm most known for. I am a best-selling author and speaker, nutritionist, hypnotherapist, and body intuitive, here to help you to release, release weight without dieting and truly thrive in life in a body that you love. Um, and this is really, the work that I do is based off of a formula that I created when I took myself through this process. So it's um, not something that you're just seeing out there, and it's also not um, something that I learned from somebody else, although there are bits and pieces of things that I, and I always attribute what I've learned to specific people. Um, ah, Marlisa, how are you, girl? It is so nice to see you. Um, all right. So everybody say where you are, give me some thumbs up and some hearts and tell me what really attracted you to today's title, Retrain Your Mind to Release the Weight. Um, I know that's a different approach and you hear a lot of different things about mindset and um, all different avenues for releasing weight and uh, the whole concept around releasing weight instead of losing weight and all of the different things that go on. Primarily, I know that you want to just get the weight off, but you also are sick and tired of doing things the same way that you've been doing them, which is the definition of insanity. I'm going to try this diet to go to this diet to go to this diet, and I'm going to expect a different result. And um, that is insane, right? But we all do it. I did it for um, well over a decade. And uh, perfect. Um, Marlisa is saying it's hard for me to accept my body for where I am when I don't want to be where I am. So I want to interject because that's a great point. I actually just shared this with um, one of my private clients and I said, listen, accepting you does not mean, that does not equate to complacency. I really want you to hear that. Accepting you does not equate to complacency. Accepting you means you're no longer in a space of resisting working with your body to achieve your weight loss goals and results with ease. Okay. So when you are in a space of resistance, you are, you're actually fighting yourself. So what that tells me, Marley says that you don't see yourself and your body as one and the same. You actually, it's almost like you're an outsider looking in. And if you're an outsider looking in, how is your body supposed to change when you're not working with your body? You're just telling it what to do. So think about it this way. Think about having a coach or somebody that's yelling at you all the time. And you sit there or even think about, you know, a child if you have kids and think, okay, would they thrive in that environment? Would they get the results or would it cause them to shrink and to actually rebel and sabotage? Would it cause them to go into a ball and just want to hide and not be seen? So anytime that we are thinking of things that we want our body to experience, it's really important that you recognize that you have to partner with your body. And if you're not accepting you, then you're not loving you. And if you're not loving you, then it's really hard for your body to give you the result that, it, that you're wanting, right? Because you're actually fighting each other. So it's important that when you're doing this, you want to be in a space of, you know, of really being in communion and partnership. And that's one of the like first and most fundamental things that I do with my clients either privately or that we do in our weight loss for life program. It's about connection, connecting to the body because the minute that you say yes to a diet, you disconnect from yourself. 
And it's really hard again to achieve a goal when you're fighting yourself. So that means that um, no matter what your body does for you, it's never enough because you're, you're just sitting there going, you're not enough until you're at the weight that I want you to be at. And you're coming from a place of dislike for oneself and driving. So that means every action that you're doing. So the workouts that you're selecting are not because your body's saying, hey, this is what we want to do and this is going to help us to lose weight because your body's always sending you messages. You're instead doing CrossFit because you want to get the biggest bang for your buck or HIIT training and your body's like, God, we really just need a day of yoga, you know, or can we go swimming and you, or you, can we dance? Can we do something else? So when we do that, then we're not in tune with our body. So even when we achieve a result, we're not going to stay there long because ine inevitably you'll rebel. So again, acceptance does not mean complacency. And this is a misconception in the dieting world. And I hear this all the time. Acceptance actually means accepting you for where you are, partnering with your body, asking it what it needs and loving it up so that you can be in a space where you are able to make the changes. Does that make sense? Um, yes, yeah, so it's not make, making where you are wrong and recognizing. Yeah, exactly. So you wanna be, you wanna be celebrating you every step of the way and celebrating because you're doing a lot of good things. But if you're not, again, we're gonna take the notion of a child if there's a child in front of you, your own, or even your best friend, right? Um, and they do something well, you're not like, oh yeah, it was all right, or could have done better. Wow, that's a shame, I, you know, I thought you would have definitely aced that, right? Like you would know, who would come back? Who would get out of bed again to wake up for that workout or choose a healthy choice when it's like no matter what you're doing, it's never enough. And again, I see this all the time in my community because it's really the perfectionist within. It's the controller, it's the, it's the one that um, needs to drive for the results. Everything, there's a belief that everything needs to be hard and you need to struggle and you don't get to where you wanna be unless it's hard, right? So when we want to change, we go into a space of acceptance Acceptance means I accept where I'm at right now. I'm not gonna resist change any further. I accept that I'm here and I accept that I was a part of what got me here. And I'm not gonna hate on me, I'm gonna love me up and then say accepting me doesn't mean that this is all there is. Accepting me means I accept where I'm at in this journey and I'm excited for where I'm going. Really, write that down, Marlisa. I accept where I'm at in this journey and I'm excited for where I'm going. Makes all the difference. Ah, uh, Chris from San Diego, my girl in my hometown, what's up? So nice to see you here. So um, Marlisa just asked an amazing question that I, that I was not intending on talking about, but I'm so glad it was brought up because I know that she's not alone and I think it's really important. So we just talked about the difference between acceptance um, and complacency and the fear around if I accept where I'm at, then it means that I'm not going to change. And it's actually the opposite. It's through the acceptance that you can change, right? Because you're not fighting yourself anymore. So um, today, let's dive in here. If anybody else has any questions, post them below. below. I love um, hearts. I love smiley faces. It helps me to know one who's here and who's really resonating with what I'm saying makes all the difference. Also, you want to stay on until the end because we have an incredible gift for you. The gift that keeps on giving. And that's what we do here each week. Our intention with Dumbo Dieting Live is that it is a mini training, a 30 minute training that gives you action steps and real tangibles that you can walk away with. Thanks guys. I love the hearts. I love them. I love them. I love them. Oh, Nicole, what's up? Um, so our goal here is to give you actionable steps based off of topics that you ask for um, to support you in your journey to being done with dieting and losing that weight to thrive in life in a body that you love without struggle and without deprivation. And um, not only are we giving you the bite-sized tips, but we also, um, these 30-minute mini trainings, we're also giving you amazing free gifts to support you, whether they're worksheets or other action steps. 
or videos or hypnosis, a million different things that we have in store for you and so many things you've already received. Um, if you missed any of these videos, you can just go under this page under videos and watch all of them. And um, you can just listen to me all all day long. It's like a dream. And, um, and if you want additional support, I would love to see you over in the done with dieting group. It is a complimentary group created just for you for women, um, like you. And because I was there and I so wish I would have had the support. And so that's where we really created all of this. I said, what did I need? What didn't I have? And what would have helped me to make this process so much more enjoyable and fun and exciting and a full inner and outer transformation that I really wanted and longed for and got. And now that's what I'm helping other women do. Um, so three, um, this is a three-step process to retrain your mind to release the weight. So step one in this is awareness. There are three A's that we're going to be working for. So please take out your pen, take out your journal. Let's get excited. So step one of this is awareness and awareness is pivotal. One, it can be painful, it can be pivotal and painful in the beginning because if you are not aware um, then you don't actually know what to change. You just know that it doesn't feel good. So we need to get into a space of awareness in order to actually have a shift. The mind only knows what you've taught it. So if you have taught it to struggle in order to get the results that you want, if you've taught it that you have to diet, if you've taught it to lose weight only to gain it back again, then it's going to do the same thing until you teach it something else. Roxanne, what is up girl? I'm so happy to have you here. So, um, the first step is awareness right down right now. I always do these tongue twisters on myself and then I wonder, and, and then I end up like stumbling write down right now, what are the things um, that you want to shift or are already aware of when it comes to your struggle with losing weight with ease? In what ways, so let me put it in this phrase, in what ways are you sabotaging yourself? Molly, it's so good to have you here, girl. Um, in what ways are you sabotaging yourself? So, what are you hyper aware of right now? Either you know that at nighttime you end up overeating. Maybe you're good all day and bad at night. Um, maybe once you start eating, you don't stop until you're overly full. Um, maybe it's uh, when you go to a buffet, you, you already have, have it in your head that you're going to overeat and allow yourself that. Um, there's a few different things. So I want you to, to write down. Those are just some examples. In what ways do you sabotage yourself? Are you good all week? And then you go crazy on the weekends. Are you good until you, your apparent like cheat day? And then you really go overboard. Um, in what ways I don't subscribe to cheat days. I just know a lot of people do. Um, so in what ways do you sabotage yourself? Right? Where you'll make a commitment to you. I'm going to start over. And then you end up within 24 hours or a few days or one week, you've completely gone backwards again. And then you recommit. So you want to write that down. Yeah. So Debbie, you lose a few pounds and then sabotage. Great. And there's a reason for that. There's always a reason. Um, so generally when we do that, when we start and then we see a result, um, it's a conditioned pattern of behavior. There's also can be fears around being seen, um, fears around it lasting, an expectation or we sense judgment from others or we start to judge ourselves. Um, so it really comes down, Annette, so good to see you, um, or at least the whole acceptance thing and bringing on the weekends. Great, perfect. So now that you have awareness, we wanna be aware of what ways we're sabotaging ourselves because if you can be aware of how you're sabotaging yourself and do step one, be, get into awareness and then go to step two, which is step two is taking action. So we've got three A's in this three step process. What's up Soraya? Oh, my done with dieting champion in there. Um, so, so good to have you and Annette. So good to have you as well. Um, so what we are doing right now is we are going through the three step process to retrain your mind to release weight. 
right? And in the beginning of this video, if you missed it, we talked about the difference between accepting you um, and how to accept you to lose the weight and how acceptance does not mean complacency and that it's actually a ne it's necessary in order to lose weight. You have to accept where you are and partner with who you are and understand your role and what got you here, right? So um, not beating yourself up, I'm, I, it's not, you already beat yourself up enough. We don't need you beating yourself up. We just want you aware that your body didn't just put on weight overnight or isn't struggling to get it off overnight, that there's, there's things that are being done, right? It's ways that you're getting in your own way, right? And we don't wanna look at you as the enemy. We wanna partner with you, okay? So, I'm gonna get my little flyaways down. Um, okay, so um, step two in that is action. And this might seem simple, like duh, I know, I need to figure out what I'm doing wrong and then take action. Well, it's not that easy. Um, if it was, then we'd all be doing the right actions, right? I always say clear intention plus inspired action equals your desired result. We all know what to do. There's a reason why aren't you doing it? So in order to take action, we need to know what that action is. Now here's where dieters get tripped up and in particular the women in my community because you're all beautiful overanalyzers and highly, highly self-critical. Um, I know this because I was the same way um, and it's something that I'm in active pursuit, always, always evolving to the next level of that because it's such an ingrained piece in me is, was to always beat myself down first. You know how people would say you need to be accountable? Well, I was the opposite. I didn't need to be accountable because I was already overly accountable. I was the first person ready to beat myself up. So I didn't need anybody else to do it or point it out, right? Um, I would be the first person that would be like, oh, it must have been me that messed up this project or me that did this or that. You know, like you walk down the street and somebody runs into you and you apologize. That was me. Um, I took I'm sorry out of my vocabulary. Um, and I always encourage my clients to as well. So step two with taking action is it's not, guys, I don't want you to analyze your actions. I don't want you to think about what actions can I take. I just want you in, in taking an action. So you notice you're about to sabotage. There is a window. There is a good 17 second window where you know what you're about to do. You are hyper aware of the fact that you're about to sabotage yourself. So aware that you're about to sabotage yourself. Jamila, my girl, what is that? Uh, you're so aware that you're about to sabotage yourself. There's 17 seconds. You have an opportunity in that 17 seconds to take action. If we even want to boil that down even more, there's a three second period where you're really getting clear on what you're about to do. So you know that you're about to go in that kitchen and overeat. You know that you're sitting there and you're putting the TV on and you're gonna put your feet up and you're not gonna put a normal portion of food in front of you. You're gonna bring the whole bag of chips or that whole thing of chocolate, right? You're gonna do all of these things. And so you know there's 17 seconds. In that 17 seconds, I encourage you to take a different course of action and disrupt the pattern. That is how we retrain our mind. We have to disrupt the pattern. What does that look like? That looks like, like one of my clients was telling me, she goes, I've been, you know, and she's a new client and she just said, I've really noticed at night that that's my thing. You know, at eight o'clock when, when I put my daughter to sleep and I'm sitting there, my husband's not home from work yet, I go and I'm in my office and it's right next to the kitchen and that's when I just wanna crunch, crunch, crunch right because she's a head she'll have the head craving right and so it's this um and so that comes from stress procrastination if you want to go back and listen to this go under cravings in the video section and listen to what i i taught about cravings and head and heart cravings on a previous demo dieting live you can go back and just binge away on videos of me not on food but on videos of me um okay so what she was saying and so i said i need you to bring your laptop into bed with you that's not something I would typically do, but her husband's not home from work yet. And I said, either bring it in, in the bedroom with you or go into another room in your house that's not near the kitchen. We need to change your environment and change that action so there's a different, different set of patterning that we are gonna create 
within your mind around working at night. So you're not sitting at your desk where you already have a pattern behavior where you normally have food paired with you. Instead, we're gonna change it. You don't bring food into your bedroom, right? So, and you're not gonna get up once you're in bed. So bring it in there until he comes home, then we put the computer away, we, all that stuff, right? And so we can allow for intimacy, shut our brains off and be present for our partners. Whole other done with dieting life. So we want you to change your actions and I want you to do radical changes of action in the moment. I don't want you thinking about it. Um, bubble baths and all those things, I know people talk about them all the time, they're nice. But the bottom line is when you're feeling that hypnotic pull to go and eat and you haven't retrained yourself and you've had a stressful, crazy day and all you want to do is go to your old best friend food and popcorn or chips or, or whatever it is that you munch on um, or chocolate, you know, then it's really hard to be like, let me go make a nice calming bath for myself. You know, you, again, you have that 17 seconds. So what can you do? Change up your environment, go for a walk, get on the phone, go in another room, put on your pajamas, brush your teeth, jump up and down, put on music and dance, go online shopping. I don't care, but take a different action and make it immediate and have it have nothing to do with where the kitchen is and nothing to do with you contemplating your thoughts and going into overanalyzing yourself and, but what I really want, no. I need fast action, okay? Is this all making sense? This is making sense, smiley faces, hearts. Give me, give me a nod here, right? So again, we wanna really to retrain our minds and do a pattern interruption. We have to take massive action in that moment to change our vibration and to change our reaction to the emotion that we're feeling that's pulling us in. Thanks guys. So that emotion that you're feeling that's pulling you in, it can be really strong because you were creating a new coping mechanism. Your coping mechanism has been eat, shove it down, beat yourself up and repeat, right? Eat, shove it down, beat yourself up and repeat. It's like a dance. Uh, so we want to change that. We want to change that completely. Instead, we want a different action, right? So for instance, if you know, I had to do like a no TV because for me, a big thing, my way of unwinding was like, put my feet up, put a little sex in the city on, you know, and then I'd sit and then all of a sudden I'd be like, oh, and I would have already eaten dinner and I'm like, or I'd bring my dinner in front of the TV. Well, you know, I'm not even registering that I'm full and then it was so nice to relax and eat while I'm watching TV that I didn't want the rest and relaxation to end. I didn't want the no pressure and just being there to end. So instead, uh, you know, I would sit there and eat and then I'd be like, well, I don't want this to end. And then I'd be like, maybe I'll grab something else. It's not bad for me. It's just another whole bag of sugar snap peas or, um, you know, hummus and, blo no, well, no, hummus wasn't my thing. You're like, um, I just grab, honestly, it, it didn't matter. Like I just want something, but I always, once I was really in my dieting phase, it wasn't crappy food. It was low calorie, calorie deficient food so that I could tell myself it wasn't doing damage, but I was still in, I was still doing the same coping mechanism. I was still feeding my mouth. That doesn't retrain your mind. That doesn't interrupt the pattern. That keeps the pattern the same. So you can go to chomping on gum to having celery, and I know you could sit there and go, but celery is not bad for you. I don't want any foods to be in the category of good and bad. I want you to eat when you're hungry, and I want you to stop when you're full, and I want food to be fuel, and I want when you're in front of the TV to, to just be able to sit without feeling the need to have your hands in something. And I want when you have a bad day to call a friend, or go on a walk, or meditate, or jump up and down, or dance around, or go shop and get your nails done or get a massage instead of just putting food in your mouth to suppress something that's still gonna be there. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay, so step three and the three A's to retraining your mind to release the weight is accountability. When you wanna retrain your mind, guys, there is nothing worse than, and thanks for it, thumbs up. There is nothing worse than when you go back on a commitment to yourself. Nothing feels worse. On a cellular, very visceral, real level, when you tell yourself, I'm committing to working out five days this week, 
This is why I tell my clients, I meet them where they're at. I go, listen, you, if you weren't working out at all, we're not going to start you off at five days. That's setting you up for failure. And you might do it the first week, maybe even the second week. And then when you go back to only three days or two days, you're going to compare yourself and beat yourself up to those first, to those first weeks. I don't want that. I want to set you up for success. Baby steps yield huge results. This is a lifetime ladies. It is not a 90 day transformation, right? I am giving you tools for full inner and outer transformation. I call it inner weight loss and outer weight loss. We've got to go from the inner first to reap the benefits of the outer. And you trust me, you feel really good when you take care of yourself and when you do the things I'm telling you. It feels amazing and it's highly transformative and addictive. You want to keep feeling this way. My clients are like, if I even told you what's going on with a few of my clients that have only been with me eight weeks, you would just sit there and be like, this is nuts. Like full on, and it's not just transformations with them. It's their marriages, relationships with their kids. Um, it's work things. It's um, being on purpose, it, it's everything. It's having more fun, more joy, more bliss, all of it. So they just feel alive. That's what you deserve, right? To really feel that. So um, going into this, the third step of the three A's, we started off with awareness, the second was taking action, the third is accountability. You cannot go through this and not be accountable to you. So when you make these commitments, don't make these grand commitments. Make a commitment. I'm going to add another 16 ounces of water to my water intake today. I'm not all of a sudden going to go from drinking three cups to a gallon. I'm not going to go from like, you know, um, I'm eating crap to being the biggest clean eater. You got to go in phases, right? You have to, or else they don't stick. And not only that, they feel really hard and drastic. So you're already a dieter. You're the dieter's mindset. The dieter's mindset loves to go extreme. I got this. I'm in. I've got it all. I can do this. No, I can totally, let's just commit. Yeah, but two weeks out of that, the, the novelty of it's worn off. And that's when you sabotage, right? So we don't want that for you. We want to create new patterns of behavior where you prove to yourself that you can trust yourself, where you prove to yourself that you win that you don't fail, where you prove to yourself that you can do this, that you are doing this. So what does accountability look like in this process? It means saying, I'm going to take on what I just learned from Melissa and Dumb at Dieting Live, and I'm gonna look at these things that I wrote down in step one, and I'm gonna really sit there and think, okay, in what ways can I change up my actions? I'm not gonna analyze myself, I'm not gonna go to crazy town in the moment, I'm just gonna be committed to taking an action whatever it is to change my physical state and way of being, to change my vibration and to get out of my head and into my body. Jumping up and down, dancing around, get it on your mini trampoline, go right outside that door, go and change, brush your teeth, start doing squats. I don't care, right? Put coconut oil in your mouth and start oil pulling so that you have to hold it in there for 20 minutes and swish it around but commit to doing something else that's going to change you in that moment so that that is no longer your coping mechanism and your immediate action step to deal with life, right? And if you're sitting there and notice that there's feelings coming up, that's truly just one, your body recognizing, whoa, she just took away our numbing mechanism. Now we need to feel what's going on. We need to feel the stress. We need to feel the procrastination. We need to feel the sadness. We need to feel whatever it is that we've been pushing down. Good, great, feel it, and then get it up and get it out, right? That's what we want. The more you suppress it, it's just hanging out, and then you're adding more fuel to it, and then it becomes more powerful and more powerful until you overeat and binge. That's what we don't want. Is this like all making sense? So step one is awareness, step two is action, massive action in the moment without analyzing yourself. Step three is being accountable, holding yourself accountable. Not beating, accountability is not beating yourself up like, oh, I should have done this, she talked about this. No, accountability is I'm holding myself accountable to really, really partnering with myself to shift out of this. And each day when I'm accountable, I'm gonna give myself a lot of love and compassion. And I'm gonna celebrate the hell 
out of the fact that I'm even here right now, that I'm doing this and I'm going to do this. And I'm going to show up, right? All that this is, is we want you to start to show up for you. How beautiful, right? Like, how, like just the love for you. It's like soulmate love. It's like, God, it's, it's so delicious. And I can sell, tell you, I did not love me for a long time. And it is always an active pursuit on my end. Always, always, always. You know, I mean, there are so many things from cancer last year to, you know, so many like, oh my God, where you can go down a rabbit hole. I don't care how much growth you've done. I'll be the first. I'm a coach. I've, I've been doing this forever in a day. And it's still, I'm a human being. You have to, when people have this notion that like at some point you're supposed to be done, like done what? Being human, done learning, done growing, done evolving. You know, as we grow and evolve, we just take things to a next level where the joy is even greater and more beautiful and where the pain can run even deeper and we just keep going through. And it's awesome because I just got like Kermit the Frog, right? What was that? Uh, because once we get on the other side, you're like, wait, but I know me. Like, I know why I'm feeling this way. Oh shoot, I like I'm so connected to me. It's cr I'm so connected to me that I I diagnosed myself with cancer. Aside from three amazing doctors, I d diagnosed myself and they told me I had nothing to worry about. That's how connected. But this didn't I used to be so disconnected. I totally saw another person. I was not me at all. I was like, who's that? You know? Um so it's it's about that partnership. So again, just recapping. This is about awareness action and and accountability but here's the best part about today's dumb dieting live i have been thoroughly thoroughly enjoying getting to speak with you ladies um i did this last week and i had so much fun with it that um i want to do it again so and i don't get this opportunity so normally um our coaches will speak with women when they need support. And so this is my chance and something, this is a big give that I wanna give back to my community. Um, I don't have many spots open, but if you want support with how to retrain your mind to release weight based off of what you wrote down for what your awareness is, you know, and you're sitting here going, okay, what are action steps? How can I do this? And you're noticing that you have some blocks and some resistance. This is the call for you. So there are a few slots open. Um, someone from my team is going to post the link right now. I encourage you to head on over and sign up. I only have so many spots. It's a 30 minute call. What I can tell you is this. I have a firm belief that if you ever have the opportunity to meet me or talk to me in person, that you are left for the better. Um, in the words of Mother Teresa, but with my own twist, um, Mother Teresa and my good friend Joe Polish, um, said this and I firmly believe and I always want to do this that if you if I'm in any way cross my path I want to leave you for the better and um, whether it's ahas breakthroughs action steps whatever it is um, that is my commitment to you on that call and it's that we get right to it by the way uh, we're not messing around it's 30 minutes and I sit there and we really go through and there's a specific process that I take you through our time is the most valuable thing that we have I don't mess around I'm committed I expect you to be committed and to show up and you will walk away with so many ahas and clear action steps and understand what's been blocking you. So I just want you to know that. Um, and yes, and this call honestly is for those of you that have not spoken with me, um, ideally that's really what this is about. I wanna be able to meet as many of you as possible and, um, and to be able to have the gift of getting to know you and um, sharing my knowledge with you. Um, my entire business is a mission-based business and it's on bringing you back to the truth of who you are before um, you ever thought you were less than due to a number on the scale and bringing you back to the wholeness that is you. Um, who are you without this need to lose the weight? Who are you without this weight? Because the weight is not your truth. You are your truth. Who is she? 
we want to find out and I'd love to get to know her. So sign up below. I hope you enjoyed this Done With Dieting Live. I know that I do. Uh, next week, we're getting a little crazy, so make sure you're on my list. Uh, we're going to have an awesome guest. I'm going to be sharing her with you, uh, but I'm not sharing her just yet, so you need to be on my list. Um, every Wednesday, you get a Weight Loss Wednesday. Um, every Thursday, you find out the uh, Weight Loss Wednesday, I tell you the topic, but I also give you, um, usually it's a vlog, um, so it's video, and um, it's on a, a different topic, but it always ties in and marries well with what we're doing here on Done With Dieting Live. And on Done With Dieting Live, we go in even deeper, and then I wanna invite you to go to the Done With Dieting group and tell me your top three ahas from tonight's Done With Dieting Live. Or if we wanna go even further, what are your ahas, what are your action steps gonna be? And what are your awarenesses? Um, let's break that down. Actually, just tell me what, was, what did you realize that you're aware of? In what ways are you sabotaging yourself? Um, so there's that. And then also the Done With Dieting Live podcast is about to launch. And I would love, love, love to have you on there. So um, I'm just excited. There's so many cool things. Stay tuned and love to you.